Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I will be talking about Prometheus monitoring in regards to metrics, exporters and collectors. This is a continuation of my Prometheus monitoring series and it is the first in-depth video that I'll be doing. The prior video was just an introduction so I'd recommend you check that out. Um, but we can get started here and first of all we're going to look at metrics and what they actually are. Metrics are a measure of some quantity at a point in time. So we can think of examples like CPU utilization, the number of requests that are being made by an application, the size of a queue at a particular period in time, and any array of data that we may want to collect about our application or about the server that our application is running on. As mentioned, it can be gathered from various sources, whether it be applications or servers or third-party tools that we're utilizing. It is then stored by Prometheus and is made available for alerting, troubleshooting, and so on. We can, we can create rules that define alerting criteria so that when uh, an issue occurs in our system based on the value of some metric, we can then be alerted via whatever communication channel that we use. So what is the data model in Prometheus? What is the format of metrics that is used? Well, first of all, it's worth noting that all Prometheus data is time series data. Time series simply means that we collect data ordered by time. So when we collect the data point, say the CPU utilization, we also collect the time at which that data point was collected. And this allows us to graph over time how uh, particular metrics in our system are behaving. So what do the metrics actually look like? They consist of a name, a set of labels, and a value. And if we go back to the prior slide, we can see some examples here. The labels are optional. So in the first example, we just have a name and a value, but we can also have this set of labels within the curly braces. So in this case, we just have a single label, which is status equals 200. And for each unique combination of name and labels, there is a unique time series. This means that for these unique combinations, we'll be able to graph uh, individually the specific time series over the period of time that we're collecting the data. So that would mean that in Prometheus, we'd be able to see two separate uh, lines on our graph for status code 200 HTTP requests and status code 500 HTTP requests in the case that we are illustrating here. And to, to sort of illustrate that, we have this diagram to the right-hand side, and we have a single metric name, but multiple different sets of labels. So we have path label, a status label, a method label, an instance label, and for each combination of label values, we'll have a separate time series. So this means that we can track, for example, post requests on the orders, endpoint that had a status 404 and we can see over time are we seeing more of these uh, 404 errors you know why that might be the case and then we can take uh, remediative action so there are a few different types of labels that we should be aware of uh, these types are only relevant generally to client libraries however it it's good for us to be able to think of metrics with this framework in use. So if you are writing an application that will use, uh, that will write out Prometheus metrics to some endpoint, then you will use the Prometheus client library and the, the client library has these four types defined. The first type is the counter, and this is a value that only goes up or can be reset to zero and it allows us to query the rate of increase uh, over time. And as you can imagine, the client library uh, 
that you will have for whatever application that you're writing will only allow us to increment uh, the value. Another metric type that we have is gauge and a gauge allows us to track a value at a given point of time but the difference between a gauge and a counter is that a gauge can decrease as well as increase. Next is histogram and a histogram type metric is used for values that need to be grouped into specific buckets. So Prometheus will have predefined buckets that you can use to collect these data and analyze the data, uh, or you can specify your own buckets that the data will be collected into. So for example, um, generally the buckets are in small incremental sizes between zero and 10. I don't have the exact values here, but it might be something like between zero and 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and one, one and two, two and five, and so on, something along those lines. It is most useful for approximation. I, if we want, if we don't want to collect all of the data relevant to a specific metric, but rather we just want to get an idea of how many, for example, requests are taking five to 10 seconds, how many requests are taking one to two seconds, how many requests are taking less than 500 milliseconds. And the final metric type is the summary metric type. This is similar to histograms, but it is useful when we don't have predefined buckets. A histogram was introduced to replace summary, so it is highly recommended that we use histogram wherever possible. Additionally, there is a difference in that the grouping into buckets takes place on the Prometheus side with the histogram metric type. However, with the summary metrics metric type, it has to be done by the application itself before it's written to Prometheus. Next, let's look at exporters and what exporters uh, do their function in the whole Prometheus landscape. Exporters are an endpoint exposing Prometheus metrics. They run alongside an application or on a server. They gather metrics and expose them in the Prometheus format. So to give you an example of an exporter, I can show you over here. I'm running a Minikube cluster and one of the default exporters that comes with the Prometheus stack is the node exporter. So if I simply run kubectl port forward, and forward from 9100 to 9100, we can see here that I have all of these metrics being exported to this endpoint. In Prometheus, if we want to see that, we can look at the targets endpoint and we can see node exporter is up and running and it is at this particular endpoint. Now this is a internal IP that is not actually accessible, but if I pour forward to it, then I can check out all of the metrics that Prometheus is scraping from my node exporter. Now, collectors. Collectors are a part of the node exporter that represents a set of metrics. So one example here is the text file collector in the node exporter. If you want to export metrics that are being written to any file within your file system, you can just specify you want to run node exporter with the text file collector and then specify the directory in which the file that you want to read from is located. Then the node exporter will take the metrics from the file and expose them where they can be read from Prometheus. So it should be apparent at this point that Prometheus uses a pull based system in order to read metrics. That is, Exporters expose metrics via HTTP endpoints. 
they'll have a list of all the metrics as we just saw right here. So for example, node disk to start scared time seconds soul. That's a that's a metric that node exporter is exporting to us. And then Prometheus decides where to read from. Prometheus will be configured with particular endpoints that it will scrape the metrics from. So this is a pull-based model. So the benefits of having a pull-based model are the flexibility in who collects metrics and from where. So you can imagine if we had a push-based model, every time that we wanted to push metrics to another location, the person who is responsible for the service and the piece of monitoring uh, software alongside that service would have to modify the monitoring software and tell it to send the metrics to another location and another location. With the pull-based model, the metrics are simply set to be exposed on an endpoint and then whoever wants to read those metrics, assuming they have the right permissions, can read the metrics. We also keep track of what endpoints should exist within our entire ecosystem. This is important because if we use a push-based system, there is no way for us to detect the absence of a particular endpoint because we're not keeping track of where the metrics are coming from, we're just keeping track of the metrics themselves. So this is an additional advantage of Prometheus and the pull-based system. One exception to the pull-based system are jobs. So sometimes if we're running short-lived jobs or cron jobs, those kind of things, there, it may not be possible to uh, scrape metrics from the job as it's such a, a transient piece of software. So in this case, we have the Prometheus push gateway and temporary jobs will write to the push gateway. And then those uh, metrics that are written get exported or just exposed on an endpoint via the push gateway and Prometheus again reads from that. So it is a uh, push based on the job side to push gateway but it's still pull based on the Prometheus side. So that is my video on metrics, exporters and collectors. I hope that was a little bit useful. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I'll get straight back to you. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.